This is an 82 years old lady presented with dense opaque cataract and recurrent tresium. She didn't want to address her tresium before or at the time of the cataract surgery and she wanted to proceed directly with the cataract surgery. Now staining the lens capsule with Tripan Blue, injection of dispersive OVDE to wash out the stain from the anterior chamber. I prefer to apply the soft shell technique by injection of cohesive OVD underneath the dispersive OVD to protect the corneal endothelium in such dense hard cataract. And now proceeding to plexus formation, start with the otorata forceps, puncture the anterior capsule in the very middle. I'm sizing the lens capsule. I'm aiming in this case to 5.5 millimeter rexus, not less. As you can see that the cornea is not in the very best shape, so maybe applying some methyl cellulose on the surface of the cornea improve the visibility. This cornea has some sort of corneal dystrophy in the form of diffuse corneal opacification and some corneal edema because of the elevated IOP secondary to this dense cataract and large nucleus. Now we have done with the rexis. The rex is of adequate size as planned, 5.5 millimeter. And now proceeding to hydro dissection. Now trying to rock the nucleus to make sure that the nucleus is completely free within the capsular bag. And now proceeding to fake emulsification. And before proceeding to emulsification, I found that the, the phaco tip is exposed more than I want. So I'm adjusting the sleeve to expose only 1.5 millimeter from the phaco tip. In these cases, I would like to apply the quick chop technique as I described before, just by applying a little bit of ultrasound to impale the phaco tip with high vacuum in the very center of the nucleus and trying to mechanically disassemble this nucleus by the vertical chopper in the left hand. And as you can see, the nucleus is still not completely separated into two halves. The two halves are still connected together. So I'm trying to give it another try from another location. Again, those two halves are still connected together. I'm trying now to divide this part of the nucleus into smaller pieces. But again, those pieces are still connected together by the posterior isthmus. And in these cases of dense, opaque, leathery cataract, I don't insist for complete separation of the quadrants from each other because I do believe this might induce stress on the posterior capsule and may cause tear of the posterior capsule and complicate the surgery. So I'm trying to divide the nucleus into small fragments, as many as I can. It doesn't matter if these quadrants are still connected together or not. Now I start with the smaller quadrant and the least attached one. I'm trying with the second instrument to, com to divide those cortical fibers connecting this quadrant to the lens of the cataract. And now we have done with this small part. Now rotating the nucleus counterclockwise, we have now to utilize the space available to get underneath the second quadrant and trying to elevate this posterior isthmus and mechanically disrupt these cortical fibers connecting the quadrant with the lens and emulsify this freely mobile quadrant within the lens capsule or in the supra capsular plane. So still the quadrants are connected together and now we are, we are about to finish with one small piece of the cataract Rotate the nucleus again counterclockwise. Now conquering the next quadrant, which is still connected to the rest of the lens, getting underneath this quadrant, elevate the posterior plate, maybe applying a little bit of ultrasound to these cortical fibers connecting this quadrant to the lens of the to the rest of the nucleus, and we can free this quadrant and emulsify it. And now we have more space, more access to the posterior surface of each quadrant, trying to elevate this isthmus away from the posterior capsule, maybe ultrasound, 
can disrupt these cortical fibers or just with the mechanical movement of the second instrument in the left hand we can cut these fibers and we have now free quadrant within the lens capsule ready for emulsification now we have we have done already with the most of the nucleus here only maybe two quadrants are still interconnected together it doesn't matter because we have now enough space to deal with these two quadrants together within the lens capsule so the issue here is to elevate the isthmus away from the posterior capsule by the second instrument and attack this isthmus trying to free each quadrant and emulsify it now we have done with the emulsification of this large nucleus and as expected only a few cortical fibers are left within the lens capsule in these hard cases I prefer to use bimanual irrigation aspiration sometimes I do two paracentesis most of the cases I do just one paracentesis because the main incision is 2.2 millimeter so it's almost the same size as the side port now injection of cohesive OVD to fill the capsular bag before implantation of the IOL a single piece IOL is being implanted into the capsular bag through 2.2 millimeter incision now wait for complete unfolding of the lens optic and the haptic within the lens capsule now the lens has been completely unfolded within the capsular bag irrigation aspiration of the OVDs from above the IOL optic if there is some cortical fibers left we can remove it easily now I'm trying to get access behind the IOL optic to clear the OVD behind the IOL because if left inside the lens capsule might induce post-operative pressure spikes which is not good for this jeopardized cornea now applying sedal test to test the leakage of the wound as you can see the main wound is almost self-sealed maybe the side port requires some stromal hydration maybe a little bit of stromal hydration to make sure that the main wound is already self-sealed at the corners and at the roof of the main incision and double check again by applying the fluorescein stain of sidle test to make sure that the wounds are self-sealed before conclusion of the surgery thank you very much